What's up guys, Barry Game here, back with some more Idle Heroes, and today we are going to be talking about Interstellar Patricia, or sorry, Interstellar Huntress Patricia, because, well, she's one of the first Transcendence Heroes since, like, Therapist Blood Betty that was actually exciting to talk about. Lord Sparkles was okay, but I still think Patricia has more... Patricia has more value and more potential upside in the future. Now, as you know, we haven't been able to test her purely at the end game because number one, we don't get enough cores of origin on these new events with new heroes to actually take them to Destiny Transition, which is one of the biggest issues in the game right now with testing. But what we have been able to test her is as like a first slash second Transcendence hero and on a solid mid game account. So we're gonna try to rate a bunch of the different game modes so you guys have a little bit more input on what I think she strives and does good at and things she fails at. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Let's jump right into it. <laughs> So let's start off and talk about her generic upsides and advantages of having this hero. Well, the biggest thing that I immediately see is the fact that she can basically dodge attacks. Dodge is something that doesn't happen on very many heroes, but when you do get her upgraded as well, uh, if you take a look over here, she has a 40% chance to dodge until interstellar armament is over. This is really, really good. She, of course, also has some additional damage hits that actually stack up pretty well. And her stun, Ecstatic Soul, is pretty reliable. The amount of times that I've got this on a target is absolutely amazing. The nice little bonus of this is not only does it stop them from doing abilities, it also makes it uh, basically so they can't block or dodge either, which is something we haven't really had before outside of drake's defense down so it's kind of like between her abilities some of her damage completely ignores all effects and of course she has the ability to stun the targets which also makes it so they can't block or dodge two of the things that drake's defense down also does do so it is something that is pretty pretty interesting I do like it. She does ramp up a little slower than a kind of round one burst damage dealer like Star Swordsman Machman or even Doom Terminator Vulcan. She's kind of like a mix where the longer she goes, the better she actually kind of evolves. And this is interesting too, especially for Sealand in the early game. When any hero on the battlefield dies, uh, Interstellar Armament gains four more chances, which is the additional attacks that she has, the chase attacks. But if the dead hero is an ally, it increases her all damage reduction by 20% and heals her. This is what we saw with the like unkillable Interstellar Hunters Patricia the other day. Pretty good. And then when you're killing enemies, you ramp up your own damage as well, giving yourself additional attack and increasing her energy. She's very easy to get multiple uh, active skills off in a row, which is really nice to see. Uh, and then, of course, she does have her other buffs, which include more damage and higher chances to get the stun effect on everybody. The one downside I will say is I'm not the biggest fan of her core. Granted, we've only had limited testing with the core, but as far as that goes... It's just okay. When it comes to her tree, uh, it's it's not bad. It's, it's decent. It deals extra damage, of course. Uh, it's a weird one because it, it uses four layers. So interesting how that works, but it does have more armor and all damage reduction It kind of passives. Uh, and of course, she does have, I think, two nodes that are damage oriented as well, which is good. She also has additional chances to CC the enemy, which is pretty interesting. So... Uh, interesting hero. I don't know if this is necessarily a first Transcendence hero style where you would build normally with the Lord of Fear Aspen, but it does mean you can build Hyperspace Hunter Islamok first with Eloise and then transition to her. So let's talk about how she is in different game modes. One thing that really surprised me was her potential in Aspen Dungeon. She actually performed much better than I was expecting her to. She does, of course, need to outspeed the enemy, which is why on some of our accounts it was a little more rough than others. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily put her way up the top because I still think heroes like Lord of Fear Aspen, even Natalia, uh, Betty, they do perform better overall in Purgatory, but she isn't like horrible. I would give her like a solid B plus score when it comes to Purgatory Aspen Dungeon. Of course, getting to Purgatory should be very easy. You should be able to do that with your Eloise as your first hero anyway. So it's not too bad, but she is pretty solid in that game game mode. In Sealand, she's surprisingly good too in Dark Sealand right here. 
I would probably give her a B plus only behind Lord of Fear Aspen. I feel like she's actually a better hero than Star Swordsman Mockman is because eventually you're not going to be one shotting the enemies with Star Swordsman Mockman. And she has the survivability to keep it going as well as even if you just have like carries on your team reviving constantly, she has a really good synergy there. Of course, Lord of Fear Aspen is like one of the best targets for this, which is why I give her like the B plus because the only one I give like an A is going to be the Lord of Fear Aspen. Uh, so again, a B plus hero overall that was not that bad. We did get to test her in Tower of Dream a little bit as well. Uh, she was decent here as well. Like honestly, across the board, she just seems like a, an above average hero. Is she godly like Lord of Fear Aspen? No, because of course he really shines. Uh, she does require a little support built around her, but the things that she brings to the table is something that I feel like no other hero has. She has hard CC, which is different than Lord of Fear uh, Aspen's soft CC. Um, she has the ability to dodge, which is one of the best survivability stats in the game. And beyond that, even more, uh, she's just like a really solid healer, too. She heals constantly with her little bits of ping damage. Now, it's not like a full HP bar like Lord of Fear Aspen gets when he uses his active skill, but it is consistent healing, which means game modes like Tower Dreams, again, B plus, I'd probably still rather have a Therapist Blood Betty, a Doom Terminator Vulcan, or maybe even a Lord of Fear Aspen. Grant the Lord of Fear Aspen is decent in this game mode, not godly. Uh, still pretty good overall. The other one I want to talk about is how impressed I was with her in Void Vortex. In Void Vortex, I felt like she was above average as well, mainly because of the ability to not die instantly. The Amon Ra style teams and two penny type teams this side kind of doubles up for aspen dungeon as well the fact that she heals a ton of little tiny spurts of healing means amon ra's healing curse isn't going to one shot this hero it's actually going to be just little minor things that get blocked and then she can continue to heal the rest of the round just like that as well because penny's reflect armor is a very big deal for heroes like lord fear aspen again i'm going to give her like a b plus score in this as well because she gets around that reflect armor from Penny as well because, again, a lot of small hits don't turn into big reflected damage onto yourself. And it ends up working out pretty well. Now, she is a little bit prone to carry, which you guys know how prevalent carry is in this, which is why I didn't want to give her an A score in this either. Uh, Carrie's energy drain really does mess with her because a lot of her upsides come from not the actual damage necessarily from the active skill, but using it gives you things like dodge rate and all these other things that are really, really strong. Again, throw a bunch of like baby carries into the lineup and it works out pretty good because she keeps healing, she gets damage reduction, it keeps stacking up, it can be very strong. And there's just a lot of upsides to using a hero like this in the game modes. She does decent damage against bosses too, which is why even in broken spaces, pretty solid hero she has some really good survivability here you guys saw we took a very basic version of this hero and honestly i think it was over here on our first e5 transcendence version hero whatever it was uh that we we're doing she even did pretty decent in broken space i think she got up to stage 10 and then she finally hit a brick wall but again it was with kind of very minimal power and it looked really interesting so if I had to give a grade to this hero, I'd probably just give her an overall B plus score. I think that is a very fair analysis of what this hero can do. The only ones that I still say are better as far as damage dealers go, Doom Terminator Vulcan, Lord of Free Aspen, Therapist Blood Betty. But when you're talking about this many transcendence heroes in the game now, what are we up to? 8, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 transcendence heroes. Being in the top four damage dealers, Pretty impressive in my opinion. So she does have potential to be even better. We just need to continue testing her when it gets to the end game, late game testing. So let me know what you guys think about this hero. I figure it's a good time since we had about a week and a half to test this hero to kind of give you our actual overall feedback. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys next time.